Okay, so this is my BMW 1987 325, and uh, I always wanted to have a an armrest, uh, but I never liked those aftermarket uh, armrests, and uh, I purchased um, a used uh, armrest from the E36, and I always wanted to install it, but I was afraid to drill uh, holes in this. Uh, uh, drive shaft hump uh, because um, you just don't know what's underneath but now I have to replace the flex disc and um, my drive shaft uh, had to come out and I decided to go ahead with it and do the armrest now if you follow my instructions you'll be able to um, get it done without taking the drive shaft off just the uh, heat shields so anyway the first thing you need to do is to remove this original uh, center uh, storage tray and there's only one 10 millimeter nut in here. You take it off and it slides back like this. The next thing you need to do is make a few marks. First of all you need to find the center here on this panel and all the marks are going to be here on the center. You're going to measure from this point here down. You're going to make uh, three marks. One mark is going to be at uh, 10 and a half inches, the other one is at 11 and 3 eighths, and the other one is at 16 inches. And the fourth mark, you're going to go down from the second mark down here at 90 degree angle and measure 2 and 5 eighths from this point. To here and put a mark in there. So this is basically the sketch of the drilling. And you're gonna use a small drill bit first uh, as a pilot drill and you're gonna drill one hole here through the carpet all the way through uh, at 10 and a half then second one at 16 I'm sorry that's the third one and the second one here you're gonna go at about 45 degrees and um, uh, drill a hole here but uh, not at 90 degrees like this but uh, 45 degrees uh, when you drill with a pilot hole the deepest um, drilling should be done at uh, three quarter of an inch no more than that or you're gonna hit the uh, drive shaft so this is the measuring from the top of the carpet all the way through the metal of the hump as soon as you go through the metal then you need to stop and not to drill through it's approximately three quarter of an inch so it's all three holes are like that one two and three the third one uh, uh, has two uh, plates in there that you need to go through um, so this is what you do is you take uh, the same pilot drill and you go about an inch and three quarters all the way through so now you're done with it you're gonna take a drill bit that is a uh, um, quarter of an inch drill bit and then you can pull the carpet off like this and drill through the pilot holes a quarter of an inch uh, in diameter so one two and three the third one you have to move your seat so you can drill it at 45 degrees so there are two ways of doing it you can use uh, self uh, threading uh, bolts and bolt uh, the mount without going under the car just like that then you, only, you don't need to drill second plate um, all the way through um, on the third hole only three quarter of an inch deep um, through the first metal plate of the drive shaft hump and um, then you're gonna put this like that and install the bolts the self threading bolts make sure that the bolts don't have any sharp tips um, so you don't uh, have any sharp points sticking out towards the drive shaft um, you may need to put some washers underneath here and uh, the back one 
when you align that um, armrest because if you just put it like this it's gonna be a, at an angle and you want it to be straight up like that but that's later once um, you install it for the first time then you need to see how much uh, and you tighten it down and you need to see how much uh, wash how many washers you need to put, put under uh, those uh, bolts uh, to keep it straight so anyway if you're gonna go this way the the bolts uh, the depth of the bolt uh, that you're gonna be installing are gonna be uh, three quarter of an inch or so so you just want to grab on that uh, uh, metal and that's it so it doesn't stick out that far uh, into the drive shaft area okay and you may want to put some silicone before you start uh, installing it permanently uh, so the area is uh, sealed from the outside uh, from the elements so that's the easiest way the the way I was gonna go is more permanent and I drilled this through two plates into the drive shaft um, area so when you drill two plates the depth is about an inch and a three quarters okay so once you're done with that uh, the next step would be is to install the threaded uh, nuts into the drive shaft uh, well the um, there is enough room in there to uh, put your hands in there and install those nuts so what I used is um, stainless steel hardware which, which I purchased at the hardware store and it basically looks like this and I'm gonna need three of those it's a dollar sixty piece the stainless steel so when you make those holes here uh, you need to run the bed a little bit sideways so uh, the hole is a little bit very little bit bigger than the diameter of the nut so it can get tighten there when you uh, pull it up from the from the side okay so this is the uh, schematics that I uh, drew for um, drilling holes and um, this is the um, that stainless steel nut that I was talking about what you do is you're gonna need a, a washer here from this side and the nut goes from the underneath the car uh, you're gonna put some of this automotive goop on the surface around the um, nut but don't put it into the threaded area just on the outside and push it from underneath the car from this side you're gonna take a, a socket a small socket and um, a bolt and uh, a washer you're gonna place a washer around it and then you're gonna install this uh, bolt like that and then take a wrench and uh, tighten it uh, so you're gonna bring that nut up into the wall uh, it's gonna pinch in the wall and uh, it will stay in place and the glue will also help to retain it um, it's important to make sure it's all tight but not too tight because you don't want to strip the threads so when you when you feel that it's tight enough go underneath the car and check it out see if the base of the nut is pretty close or flush with the or sitting on top of the wall of the uh, drive shaft well so this is what you see uh, here is the one that is done it sticks out about one eighth of an inch from the metal to the top edge so you have that sticking out a little bit on the washer just for better stability so uh, you're going to do three of those one two and the third one is under there um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now once you install this you're gonna take the bolt out of course and I'm gonna do the other two now and then um, I will proceed with the rest of the installation okay so now you see I have installed the armrest and uh, uh, there still has a little bit more space on this side next to the seat versus the driver's side so I need to change the alignment of this um, uh, armrest so that the way to do it is to put washers under this uh, nut here under the 
mount and um, these are just a temporary bolts that I have installed for now to al align the armrest uh, you don't need you will not need to do this um, because I'm going to tell you exactly how long the bolts should be and how many washers you need to put underneath to align it straight uh, but keep watching the video all the way to the end because at the end I'm going to tell you exactly how how long the bolts are, how many washers you need to put under each bolt and uh, what I would have done differently if I had to do it uh, next time. Um, some things I would have done differently if I knew what's exactly involved. So the next step would be is to um, set the tray and uh, I'm going to this is the E36 center tray. I'm going to cut this portion off and then align with this uh, E30 piece and uh, cut new holes with the Dremel so this retainers go in. Okay, so now you can see I cut off that mounting plate of the E36 center console. I used an angle grinder to cut it off and I cut new slots in the E30 piece um, to fit the E36 console and at the end of the video we'll post the schematics of that um, we're all gonna also find out that the center console of the E36 does not quite fit the uh, profile of the drive shaft hump of the E30 and you can have some space between the um, center tray and the carpet so what I came up with is uh, with this uh, weather seal that uh, I had left over from my um, trunk I have uh, replaced this uh, seal because it was torn with a new seal that I bought on eBay and um, um, but the old seal I kept and I found the piece uh, that does not have any rips and I installed it on this uh, center piece to compensate for those spaces between the carpet and the center tray. Uh, you notice how the seal has um, one flat side and the bulky side so I chose the bulky side to be inside so the profile of the center tray would be more uh, flush with the side of the center tray um, so also I use the Dremel type of tool to cut those uh, holes for them um, uh, to accommodate the E36 uh, center tray um, anyway I also found out that my measurements were not quite correct so I'm gonna have some revisions done to it and I will um, show it to you at the end of this video it's not much but if you change it just a little bit it will fit a little bit better okay so now the preparation is complete I'm gonna be installing the base of the armrest so basically what we have here is uh, I have installed those nuts from the other side of the uh, car and from underneath the car I placed one small washer next to it and a larger washer around it to produce a, a stronger base, a lot less flexible. And same thing here, there is a metal washer there and there is one there. So the larger washer is about um, uh, one eighth of an inch thick and the smaller washer is there one sixteenth of an inch. So this is all done. Now we're going to close this up and install the base of the armrest and put two bolts in first and lightly secure them. Uh, before we do that I'm gonna place six washers. It's a standard washer from a hardware store, um, stainless steel though. They're gonna be going on top of the carpet on the bolt one. On the bolt two we have two washers and this is just to align them armrest properly so it's centered that it doesn't rub the seats on the side and uh, once you install the first two the third one you're going to be tightening right there and uh, that will align the armrest to the right a little bit and um, by tightening that bolt you'll be able to move the armrest a little bit to the right and once it's centered then you can stop tightening uh, the base um, should be next to that washer. That's about the right position of that uh, armrest so it, uh, the uh, center tray goes in place correctly and uh, there is a, no uh, misalignment so all the pieces go together. Um, once we put the armrest on I'm going to use the bolt 
uh, with another stainless steel washer on top like that uh, to, to produce the larger surface of pressure on the armrest and I'm going to be using some of the nylon spacers to uh, produce um, so the bolt is centered actually inside the armrest uh, these are also I got a hardware store um, at the end of the video I'm gonna describe this parts a little bit more accurately and the diameter and the size of it too so now we're going to the okay so now base is installed um, first I installed uh, this bolt and the bolt 3 under there uh, bolt 1 and 3 I end up using a uh, two and a quarter inch long stainless steel um, quarter of an inch uh, bolts and uh, using a nut to tighten it. So I install it loosely first you can see those six washers underneath uh, I installed it loosely in all the way and I looked under the car make sure the bolt does not stick out of that nut that was installed earlier uh, so it's just flush with the nut and then by holding this bolt I tighten the nut and uh, um, until it's all tight and then I used this um, it's an inch and a quarter long bolt to align the um, armrest basically every time you tighten them you put this down and you check the distance between the seats make sure it's not rubbing the seats and it's centered as possible so now it's all done here I'm gonna use some uh, glue like this type any silicone glue would do it and I'm gonna glue this uh, on top of the nut here into the thread so that it doesn't get untightened and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this uh, bolt head too uh, if you need to remove it you can just peel that uh, glue off and uh, you will be able to remove that uh, the other thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna go under the car and I use this undercoat spray and I'm gonna paint all that um, exposed uh, nuts there uh, with this undercoat uh, paint and that will protect it from elements so this portion is all done now I'm gonna continue with it I'm gonna install the center tray uh, bolt it down and uh, align it okay so now I tried all the parts and everything fits properly um, I'm gonna assemble everything together here you can see I used two washers and a metal washer, two rubber washers. Those are called bib washers. I got them from um, Ace Hardware. And the inner diameter hole is a little too small. So I took a quarter of an inch drill bit and I drilled um, a little bit larger hole and ran the drill bit in and out like that to make the hole larger so the uh, rubber washers will turn out slightly. I usually those rubber washers they have like a one rubber wheel in here on this side and the other, and one on the other side but it's uh, usually broken so anyway there's also a metal washer that I got from Osh hardware store and the washer you can use any washer but make sure it doesn't stick out into this opening um, otherwise uh, it's going to be scrubbing the uh, retaining pin so uh, I also use some glue to put on those bolts and uh, nuts to secure them so they don't uh, get undone over the years. And I use a zip tie to secure the um, wire that goes to the handbrake and to the cigarette uh, ashtray. Um, it's a light in there. I'm going to remove this tape. This was the securing tape of the wire. Now it's secured by the zip tie. Now I use the uh, rubber, uh, I'm sorry, leather boot from the, I bought it on eBay and uh, I made the uh, bracket for it out of the um, hanger, uh, dry cleaner hanger um, you can do it yourself or you can buy a used one off of eBay uh, the E30 boot will not fit in here it's more narrow and longer um, so um, the uh, I also painted under the car those stainless steel uh, nuts uh, but I abandoned the idea of using spray paint instead I used the brush and um, I just sprayed some paint on a piece of paper and then I used the brush to uh, paint those uh, uh, nuts so they're all covered up with the paint okay so the next step would be is to assemble everything together and then we'll continue 
Okay, so now you can see everything is installed. Um, I'm gonna need to get an ashtray, which I don't have, and uh, some inserts and cup holder. So you can see this is not loose because of those rubber washers are installed, and uh, everything looks pretty good. Uh, you need to make sure that um, once you install this boot, you need to make sure that handbrake is going down. Uh, freely, so because uh, sometimes the bulk of this uh, boot may interfere with um, handbrake going down all the way. That's important to check. Now the next step is I would would be I'm going to install this uh, uh, frame for the cup holders and other things. Um, so there's going to be some holes need to be drilled. And first I'm going to drill a hole, a one eighth of an inch hole here all the way through this console and I'm gonna put a self-tapping screw in there to connect these pieces together so they're a little bit tighter um, and uh, two quarter of an inch holes here so this uh, pieces uh, here this retainers uh, will go in through and it'll also help to secure everything together and then I'm gonna put a self-tapping screw and the retainer uh, in here to keep the frame in place and um, that's pretty much it everything is done so now I'm just gonna need to get the um, uh, other pieces that are missing the ashtray and the cup holders and also I'm gonna get some uh, shoe dye from Walgreens or any other drugstore uh, they sell uh, what it's called shoe dye and it's like a leather paint and they sell it in black so I can uh, clean the surface with some soap and water really well and then I'm gonna use that uh, shoe dye to paint this leather and it will look like brand new so that's pretty much it uh, now the self tapping screw didn't work so I had to use a different bolt with uh, this type of nut so the bolt should be about um, an inch and a quarter long so you can easily put this on from the inside there and you just tighten it the, this nut will stay in there in place it will not turn you don't need to hold it once you uh, thread it on a little bit uh, the other idea I got is I used a little bit of this weather foam and I put inside those two panels to take out that extra space that was in there of mismatching the E36 with E30 panel. Um, so it's pretty tight now and uh, looks pretty good. I'm gonna install the tray and uh, by the way this type of uh, uh, bolt works very well on the knee bolster on the driver's side. As you can see I have it installed there. So what you do is you take the knee bolster down that panel off completely. Uh, it usually has a plastic screws that always fall out and you put some glue on this uh, nut and stick it from the from the inside of the dashboard and push it in but the glue should be around this so it stays in place and then you put the bolt in and tighten it so to push this uh, wings into the form of the dashboard and once the glue sets, they can take the bolt out and um, uh, put the pedal back on and use those uh, those uh, screws, those bolts to uh, reattach it. There are three of them, and of course the size is a little bit bigger than uh, this one is like uh, uh, three eighths of an inch, I guess, and uh, that one is about uh, four eighths of an inch, and you can get those. Uh, the screws anywhere in a hardware store and uh, the nut once it when it, the glue set stays in there permanently so um, to remove the panel you just unscrew those three bolts uh, one here and two on the other side there and that's it all right so I'm gonna finish up with this uh, uh, armrest and I'm gonna put everything together and give one more shot of the everything being completed and um, there's gonna be a few minutes of going over it with all the hardware that you're gonna need and I too. Now you see the installation is complete. All I need to do is to get some cup holders and 
coin holders and insert them in there. Um, the thing to check for when you're done how your handbrake operates, it should be you should be able to push it down all the way so there's no interference and you should have some room there before it clicks the first time otherwise the sensor on the back will always show you that you have handbrake on okay so make sure you check that for operation this is what it looks like there's no interference with the seats I'm gonna paint that with a leather die and I'm gonna need an ashtray for the back this by the way is connected this piece of the trim connected with two plastic spread screws so you can see them in there okay so and this is what it looks like from the side and from the back so the installation is complete the next thing I'm going to show you is what kind of hardware I used it doesn't have to be exactly the same hardware but as long as you um, have the same dimensions of the hardware, like the thickness and the diameter, that should work fine. So I borrowed some pieces, uh, some missing pieces from the other car that I have, and I just wanted to show you one more time what it looks like. Um, this is the old center tray, and this is the new E36 uh, tray installed two cup holders. You can actually add another cup holder and another uh, coin holder instead of the ashtray, but ashtray is also a good place to store things. And this is what it looks like on the front. And that's the back ashtray installed. Now this project is finished and I'm going to go over a few things with you. Um, I'm going to give you new measurements and also I would tell you what I would do differently if I had to do this um, again. Now um, the new measurements for hole number one is 11 inches, for hole number two is 12 and one eighth of an inch and two and a quarter of an inch down and a third hole would be at 16 and three quarter of an inch. What I would do differently next time if I had to do it, I would drill hole number one and hole number three. Then install the base of the armrest and uh, using it as a template, I would drill hole number two with the pilot drill. Then remove the base and continue with the installation. Now, these are the measurements that I took of uh, the uh, surrounding of the stick shift of the, uh, this is a E30 piece uh, those are the new holes that you're gonna need to cut with a Dremel type of tool uh, to be able to insert the E36 center tray into the E30 piece um, you should also look at um, um, at the center uh, tray uh, alignment because my E30 uh, surrounding of the stick shift was a little bit warped and I had to do a few adjustments of the uh, holes that I cut out to make it all straight. Now this is the hardware that I used. Some of them are hardened washers, some of them are stainless steel. Uh, so on the left it's hardened washers from Osh and on the right you see all the stainless steel and nylon and uh, big washers that I used. Um, in the circles you see the quantities of the uh, hardware that I used. Uh, where You see uh, 2 to 4. Um, I would get 4 instead of 2 uh, because when you install those um, stainless steel nuts uh, the threads gets a little bit um, not straight but damaged and uh, um, it's better to use brand new hardware when you permanently install the armrest. Um, now uh, these are the big washers on the right you see the one that uh, had been drilled and on the left is uh, the one that uh, you get from the store. Uh, 
this is the some of the tools that you're gonna use uh, the pilot drill the main drill the electric drill uh, and the general type of tool a zip tie to tie the um, boot for the um, handbrake uh, some silicone type of glue um, safety glasses of course a marker pen uh, and this is the uh, bolt and a nut that I used to connect uh, the center tray to the E30 uh, stick shift surrounding uh, so this is pretty much it so I'm gonna show you uh, each uh, sheet of uh, this for a few seconds one more time so these are the measurements These are the measurements for the cutouts. That's the hardware that I used. And some other tools. So that's it. I hope everything was clear. I tried to explain as best as I could. And good luck.